Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today, I will be showing you a complete guide to player own farms. I will cover as much as I possibly can. Now, the table of contents is really long, and for every section, there's also a subsection as well. Feel free to pause this video because I'll be moving on to the next section. It is located a little north of the Arty Lodestone. Talk to Granny Potterington, and then you can start the tutorial. Now I highly suggest you start this as soon as possible, because this way, you'll get player owned farm animals as a drop. The requirements for this are you need 17 farming and 20 construction. I do suggest you have 60 construction, because this way you can build all the pens. With 92 farming, you can unlock all the animals. I mean, this is really self-explanatory. You should be able to understand the very, very basics of player owned farms. Also, you can talk to Granny and she'll give you free beans. Now this only happens at level 99, in which case she'll give you 100. You also get 500 more at 120 farming, and finally, 1000 at 200 mil farming XP. Here is the table of contents for the basic section. Feel free to skip this section because I will definitely be moving on. The Puff Trade Discord FC. Yes, this is actually really helpful, okay? Now first of all, I will definitely leave that link in the description. This is even better than trading at World 2. So you get the best deals for the animals in this FC. There is also a discussion section for the player owned farms. Yeah, they will answer your questions in a pretty expert opinion. Now each subsection also has an animal type as well, which you get to find out which animal you need. On top of everything, there is a price check section as well. Like it is just so amazing. Seriously, it just makes life so much easier. Here are the basics of player owned farms. There are three pens to start with the small, the medium, and the large. You can build two of each size pen. You must unlock this from pen deeds. The small pen will fit six animals, the medium will fit four, and finally, the large will fit three animals. The breeding pen can also fit four animals. In every pen, only one type of animal can fit inside. So there are nine different animals in total. You can actually obtain them by training a player or by buying an unchecked animal off the GE. Here is the animal chart and the farming level requirement, and which type of pen they will occupy. The animals in a bank are time frozen. They will not catch a disease, they will not grow, nor will they even breed either. The checked animals will not stack in a bank. Here are the properties of the animals. I will explain this a little bit briefly. Every animal has multiple different breeds. There are 4 to 5 growth stages. The traits are various on the animals, and they have various effects. So the health and the happiness, they will both affect the breeding success. Animals can catch a disease, but you can actually cure them by knowing the right treatment. So gathering produce. When it comes to gathering produce, you can get a lot of farming XP and resources. Let's talk about food. You do not need to be inside the pen, and the noted food does work as well. So it's really simple, just left click and add it to there. There is a faster way to add food, and that is by walking inside the pen. You can add up to a thousand of them at a time, so you do not recover the food you add. Instead, what ends up happening is, it will turn into mush. Every animal will only eat one piece of food every two hours. So yes, this will increase the health and the happiness over time. If at 100% health and happiness, the animal will never get disease. Just letting you know, the animals do not starve to death. They can still grow, even if they have a disease. Now obviously, that is a lot of food, but I'm only going to narrow this down into a couple of choices. Now some of the food does overlap the other, so you do not need to buy all 7 kinds of food. What I listed here are the best trade volume in the GE, they're very cheap, as well as having a really high buy limit. So the best food for Iron Man, well, there's not really much of a choice because you can only buy from the NPC. Here are the food store locations. So the Wood Leaves, you can buy them in Falador Park. Nowadays, you can buy as many as you can, and they only cost you 25 GP. So the Taverly Seed Shop. It is located north of the Taverly Lodestone. They will restock every single hour, so I would only suggest you need to do this maybe 2 or 3 times a day. You will definitely get a lot of seeds this way. The Meat Packs. They are located in Uglog. Just use the Uglog Lodestone, and then you're gonna keep going east. After that, go south and squeeze the Agility Shortcut. You'll then keep going south until you reach the meat shop. They restock 310 per day, which is actually a lot here. Disease. 
animals can catch a disease. First of all, they do not die from disease, and they can still grow even if they catch a disease. So by not feeding them, it will make them more vulnerable to getting a disease. The health and happiness are then lowered over time. By checking each body part, you can identify the symptoms. Then you'll apply the correct treatment in order for them to recover. By curing 100 animals, this is actually an achievement. Here are the growth stages and the produce. The animals will mature over time. Well, you do not need to be logged in, but the animal has to be in the farming pen. So there are four growth stages. The baby, or as some people call it, the child, the adolescent, then the adult, and finally, the elder growth stage. Some animals will have an egg stage before they hit baby or child. I've been talking about how animals don't die, and no, they do not die from old age either. Every animal grows at a different pace. By gathering produce, you will get a lot of farming XP. So you can only gather once per growth stage. However, if you forget to gather from before, you will not miss out on the XP from the previous growth stage. The XP multipliers do not boost when you're gathering the produce. However, they will fill the farming urns. There is also a chance of getting the brain's farming pet. Here are the traits. Animals can have traits, both positive, negative, or even cosmetic. There are 78 total traits in the game, 18 of which are animal specific, and some of which only appear in slot 2 or 3. An animal can have 1 to 3 trait slots. So usually the unchecked animals, they only have 1 trait slot. This is why you don't want to buy them from the GE, okay? Like they're just so much more expensive anyways. By having multiple traits, they will stack additively. Anytime you do not like the trait, then well, we have the trait rerolls. Unfortunately, you can't reroll the empty trait slots. You cannot turn a 1 trait animal into a 3 trait animal. I mean, this is a really long list, but only a handful of traits are really important anyways. Animals can reproduce, just like in real life. This requires a male and a female, either an adult or an elder stage. Animals of different breeds can crossbreed if they're the same animal. They can only breed in the breeding pen at first. However, you can unlock the ability to breed in every single pen. This will cost you beans though. Every animal has a breeding cycle and the success rate. Now, it is assumed at 100% health and happiness. An animal will force breed after 5 failed attempts. Now this only works in the breeding pen, and the partner must be a male to female. Animals of the same gender can adopt, but I highly do not recommend this, okay? At a specific season or nighttime, some animals can be bred. Luckily for you, you do not have to wait all 12 months. I will explain this a little bit later on. When an animal is bred, there will be a chat box message. That means that you must be online at the farm in order to immediately start growing. Just like Pokemon, we have the shiny animals. Well, the main reason is because of the breeding log. The chance of getting a shiny animal from breeding is 1 in a thousand. The text will show shiny with an exclamation mark. Now the breed of that animal is still classified as its original breed. For example, a golden chinchampa can be classified as a shiny crystal, a shiny azure, a shiny copal, you name it. You get the idea, right? Well, they also give you 10% more farming XP from harvesting. Animals can produce manure. For large pen animals, they will produce manure at a 50% chance every 10 minutes. They're mostly cosmetic. In order to scoop up manure, this requires a bucket in your inventory. Regular manure is used for compost, green manure super compost, and finally, the dragon manure for the ultra compost. Scooping up manure for 20 cows is an achievement, just so you know. So let's talk about beans. Here is the table of contents. Just feel free to pause this video because I will be moving on to the next section. You can only obtain beans in one way. This is by selling animals to an NPC buyer. It is best to sell them at adolescent stage because they have the maximum bean value. A small pen buyer will appear every day, a medium every other day, and finally, a large pen buyer will appear every 3 days. Here's the full bean value chart, as well as things that will increase the bean value. In a recent update, you can talk to Granny and then you get to choose which animal buyers will show up. Unfortunately, you do need the farming level requirement in order for them to show up. The Farmer's Market Well, there are various rewards and unlocks that you can buy that, you know, help in player own farms. Then we have the Magic Beans, which are going to be used to grow the plants instantly. Yeah, that is really amazing. The Farming Seasons Based on the actual season's month, the farming season will change. We do have the Seasonalizer Wheel, and they will cost you 5,000 beans. 
It is a completion escape requirement in order to unlock all four tracks. Here is the fastest way to get beans. I only suggest this if you're a high level player. You should only do this for the unlocks or the completion escape requirement. There is also an achievement for earning a total lifetime of 1 million beans. You don't have to hold a million at once, don't worry about it. They will track your total earnings. You'll be selling 6 dragons, 8 zygomites, and 12 chinchampas, all of which are adolescent stage. When you're going through the chat box, you want to check which animal breed the buyer wants. You'll get more bean value this way. The Master Farmer's Outfit. From selling the animals, you'll get 10% more beans. The animals will age 7% faster. Basically, the farm only updates when you enter it. This means that you don't need to AFK in the farm in order to get the bonus. The best way to get this is by going to the Uncharted Isles and then harvesting the mushrooms. This requires 94 farming. If you're not 99 farming, this will take you 45 hours. Yeah, as you can see, it is really AFK here. If all you care about is 99 farming, then well, I don't suggest you go after this outfit. And when I say that, I mean don't buy the fragment packs or even AFK in the mushrooms in the arc. Let's get into the training section as well as the best way to use the magic beans. Here's a table of contents, so feel free to pause this video because I will definitely be moving on. The first training method is by training farming via reproduction. Now this is a really cheap or possibly even a free way you can get farming XP. I will mostly be explaining things, well, from an Iron Man point of view because I just want Iron Man to look at this guide. If you're a main account, then well, you can just buy the breeding pairs from players. From 17 to 28, you'll be breeding the rabbits in the breeding pen. Now the rabbits you'll be using are from the tutorial. They will breed pretty often actually, like every 5 to 25 minutes. You will grow all of them to Elder, and then you'll sell them to the NPC buyers. Yeah, this will give you a couple of nice starter beans. From 28 to 54, you'll be doing chickens. You want to unlock small pen deed number 2. This will cost you 100 beans. You will buy 12 chicken eggs from the farmer's market. This will cost you 300 beans. They will take 4 hours and 10 minutes to grow. If you grew 12 of them all at once at the same time, this will give you a total of 30,000 farming XP. Yeah, it is just so fast and amazing. From level 54 onwards, you will be doing the chinchapas. You will need to hunt a lot of skill chapas here. I mean, they are pretty good hunter XP, so you might as well just hunt these anyways. You want to get a male and a female chinchapa, any breed, it doesn't really matter. You will then keep reproducing them. Preferably, you want to get at least one carnivorous chinchapa. The reason being is because they are pretty valuable at endgame PVM, and not to mention that, yeah, they are pretty good range XP per hour. So you want to unlock the ability to breed them in the small pens. This will cost you a thousand beans. If you don't have a thousand beans at this point, then you just want to sell four of those offsprings when they hit the adolescent stage. You will get 30k farming XP every 42 hours. Yeah, it is extremely amazing XP and beans. In fact, this is the best mid-level beans for Iron Man accounts especially. So the medium pen. Now this requires 40 construction. I mean, if you're a main account, then you can just pretty much buy the Mithro Nails. This requires 54 smithing in order to make the Mithro Nails if you're an Iron Man player. You can actually boost it from as low as 48. So the medium pen building kits, they will cost you 1.5k. From 35 to 64, you'll be doing sheep. So you want to buy the sheep from the farmer's market, and then you'll grow them to Elder. This should take you 2 hours. Now the XP isn't all that great at this level, so if you're an Iron Man account, then I probably wouldn't suggest you buy the pen building kits. Like, you're better off waiting until you have 54 smithing. From 64 to 81, you will be doing the spiders. You want to unlock medium pen deed number 2. Now this will cost you 500 beans. You also want to unlock the ability to breed them inside the medium pens. That will cost you an additional 3,000 beans. The best location for hunting the spider eggs is either at the stronghold of security or the catacombs. I would really suggest you have the Corruption Blast ability unlocked because, really, it just helps so much here. So it should take you around 1 to 2 hours for every spider drop. So the Zygomites. I highly recommend you complete the Moritinium Medium task. This way, the Mushroom Patch in Canifis will never get diseased. For the Medium Elf City task, you get to unlock a second patch. So yeah, just do your mushroom runs as often as possible. You can harvest them every 4 to 5 hours. From doing this, you will definitely get a lot of zygomites this way. In fact, you'll probably end up with more zygomites than you can even fit inside the pens. 
their drop rate is 1 in 50 chance. So the large pen animals. Now this requires 60 construction. If you're a main account, then well, you could just buy the rune nails from the GE. However, for Iron Man players, you will need 89 smithing, or this can be boosted from as low as 83. I'm pretty sure this is going to be changed when the mining and smithing rework arrives. The large pen building kit will cost you 2.5k beans. From 49 to 71, you'll be doing the cows. You will buy the cows from the farmer market, which will cost you 100 beans each. If you're an Iron Man player, well, it's not actually that good of a farming XP. You probably won't have enough beans to afford this anyways. Or better yet, you won't even have the smithing level requirement. You'll be raising yaks from 71 to 92. You will unlock large pen deed number 2, which will cost you 1000 beans. You also want to unlock the ability to breed them in the large pens. This will cost you 7000 beans. You will be killing the Fremnic yaks. I strongly suggest you have old act coil and aggression potions. The reason being is because, well, they have a pretty low spawn rate here, and absolutely not AFK without them. For the main accounts, well, it's an achievement for getting a yak, so you might as well just go ahead and do this. You want to get yourself a male and female yak, because this way they can keep reproducing. From 92 onwards, you'll be doing dragons. In your player owned dungeons, you'll be killing dragons. Once again, you will get yourself a male and female breeding pair. Now this isn't the fastest way to get dragons because you can kill QBD and you'll get the black dragon eggs as well. Now the drop rate for this is 1 in 200. So when it comes to the breeding pen, you'll be using the highest level animal you currently unlocked. Here is the XP per week if you're a high level player. You'll grow 4 dragons every week, 6 Zygomites, and 12 Chinchapas. It really doesn't take you that long to set everything up. I mean, the breeding pairs for a main account are really not all that expensive. Once you get chinchapas, the beans will come at a much easier pace. There's an even faster method for farming XP. Yeah, you will be raising baby animals all the way to Elder. The other advantage to this is that you do not need to feed them, and you do not need to worry about unlocking the ability to breed, as well as having two more slots in every pen. You'll be selling them at Elder Stage 4 beans. Here is the full chart for all the animals. You want to buy a medium pen deed number 2 at 64 farming, and then you also want to buy a large pen deed number 2 at 71 farming. For the breeding pen, well, you will put the highest level animal you've currently unlocked. The XP per week you can get for this is 4.7 million. It is incredibly fast doing this. It is somewhat expensive, but even then, it is still a little bit cheaper than tree farming. Like, the only issue is that it's not exactly traded very often in the POF trade FC, although this method is starting to become a little bit more popular. Let's talk about the magic beans. The best XP are the woody beans. You'll be planting them at the elder tree patch. Now, I highly suggest you wait for double XP weekend and make sure the Chris voices Saren is on. However you pronounce that, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Don't forget all XP multipliers. Things like urns, the outfit, the raff, pulse cores, etc. All these things really do add up. I actually forgot to bring the farming urns because I'm almost 200 mil farming. The base XP you can get for this is 23.2k, in which case it is 5.8 XP per bean. The best XP you can get for this is 70.4k with all the XP multipliers and double XP we can. This can be bumped to 17.6 XP per bean. If you're wondering whether it's better to sell adolescent animals, in which case you'll get more beans, versus compared to elder animals, then the answer is no. It is actually better XP to sell at Elder Stage, and then you'll be using the spare beans for the woody beans. If you're looking for the best profit, then that would be the sun-dry magic beans. You'll be planting them in the Canifis mushroom patch. I highly recommend the following. The Mauritania Elite task, the Elf City Heart task, the Tier 2 Zygomite perk, and finally, the perfect Juju farming potion or the perfect plus potion. The farming cape will give you the patch bomb effect as well. So as you can see right here, this is my loot from 120 sun-dry magic beans. Let's talk about the breeding and the money making section. First and foremost, you want to unlock the ability to breed outside the breeding pen. Now this will cost you a total of 11k beans. You want to also unlock multiple trait boosters. Now this will cost you 27k more beans. The master farmer outfit, well, they will give you better traits. You want to make sure food is always available and keep the health and happiness to 100%. Here are the recommended traits to go after and keep. 
They don't have to be perfect traits, but these ones are particularly good examples to keep. So the studly trait, this will give you a higher breeding success. This in turn will give you more animals produced. If you're going for farming XP, then these are the best traits to keep. Genetic instability will give you better chance of having more traits. It is really helpful for getting whatever traits you really want. Then we have the shiny animal traits, which of course will give you a higher chance of getting shiny animals. Again, I'd love to give a huge shout out to Poff Trade FC because they sell you a lot of perfect breeding pairs. So the best all round combination, well, this is for most scenarios, but not the best combination individually, would be the Studly on the first slot, Instability on the second slot, and Radiant on the third slot. You can also use trait rerolls if you do not like the trait. I only suggest rerolling if you've obtained the Radiant trait on the third slot. The reason being is because this trait is actually a little bit rare. So by rerolling the second slot, it's actually much easier than the third slot. And then the first slot is actually the easiest of all. So here's how you get shiny animals really fast. By having both parents with these traits, you will get a 10% chance of a shiny animal. Some people like to put Studly on the first slot because, well, some animals really do take a long time to breed. By having instability on the second slot, that means you get a higher chance of three trait slots. So yeah, go ahead and mix and match to your liking however you want. Royal dragons, however, they have a couple of requirements. The first requirement is that the dragon must be a black dragon. You must have three different dragon brats. The perfect breeding pair for a royal dragon is shown on screen. This will give you 11.5% chance. So as you can see right here, this is what a royal dragon looks like. Let's talk about money making. I only suggest this if you're a high level player. So you want to unlock all the pen deeds and the ability to breed in all size pens. You will need a lot of bank space here. For the small pen, I would suggest the carnivorous chinchapas. You want to have studly times 6 on both of the parents combined. The reason being is because they have a pretty low breeding success. Alternatively, you can put one small pen of elder rabbits. They will give you 7% more breeding success. It's actually more AFK, but it is less profit per day this way. For the medium pen, you will have zygomites. The traits you will have are studly times 4 and radiant times 2 on both parents. The reason being is because, well, the shiny zygomite males are really worth a lot here. For the large pen and the breeding pen, you'll be doing black dragons. The traits you want to have are studly times 3 as well as genetic instability times 3. The three trait dragons are actually worth more than normal. By having the rabbit totem perk active, you really only need two studly traits. So yeah, just pretty much grow to adolescent and then sell them. You will be selling them to either Poff Trade FC or World 2. Generally speaking, you will check player own farms approximately every, I don't know, 12 hours or something. Now I cannot really give you a definitive profit per day because there are so many variables here. And of course, the prices do fluctuate a lot here. So the alternative money making method would be to sell the animals at a baby stage as soon as they're born. Unfortunately, they will clog up even more bank space, but they will offer you potentially more GP per day. The second last section I'll talk about are the farming perks. Now I will also be reviewing each and every single perk. You want to buy a farming totem and then you'll place it on the pen. By having the elder animal present inside the pen, you will get the effect. By having two of the same animal in two different pens, you will get tier 2. By filling all the totems, it is actually an achievement. So the rabbit perk. Now it is an okay choice to have because, I mean, by having multiple studly traits, they really do increase the breeding success. However, it is pretty good for hunting for shiny animals. Now the reason why I wouldn't suggest the rabbit perk is because the chinchampas give you better XP, better money, and the better beans. At best, if you want to use this, then I would only suggest one small pen. For the chickens, there are two different kinds. You can fit them both in the same pen. The hen perk, well, they will barely save you money because the feathers are really cheap these days. Maybe for Iron Man, but even then, we do have the feather packs these days. For the rooster perk, you will take it out of the bank and then place it there. This will increase the GP per hour at the Spiritual Warriors and the Edamus. The Chinchampa perk. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with the combat chinchampas. There isn't really any other choice to place in the small pen. The skill chinchampas are a little bit expensive to use, but hopefully in the future, their price will drop. The sheeps have two different animals, and both of which will stack in the same pen. The ewe perk. I mean, is sheep shearing even an option in 2018? Come on. 
Like, I don't even know why this exists. For the ram perk, I would say it's an okay effect to have. Then again, the strands are pretty easy to obtain, however. So the spider perk. Now this is actually the best effect ever. This actually does work with Araxor and Araxi. When you're about to go for Araxi trips, you want to place this inside the pen. For the Zygomite perks, well, you'll get extra mushrooms from the patches, the clusters, or even the rotting logs. Unfortunately, you won't get extra XP from this. The cow perk. They will both share the same perk, for the cows and the bulls. For the cow perk itself, really? Who does churning in 2018? The bull perk will give you a chance of an extra compost bucket. It's actually good if you're trying to farm super or even ultra compost. So just keep this in your bank and then switch it out when you're about to get your super or ultra compost. For the yaks, they will give you a chance of finding a clue scroll when you're farming. Unfortunately, it only rolls once per farming patch. I mean, the clue scrolls are really easy to get these days, so I would not bother with this. And finally, we have the dragons. They will give you a really small chance of getting an effigy when you're checking a patch. Unfortunately, it only works if Ultra Compost is used. To be fair, the Ultra Compost is fairly expensive, but I mean, it might be useful if you're trying to go for the Effie pet desperately. I would just keep a totem in there anyways, and of course the dragon in there as well. And finally, the very last section I'll talk about are the other achievements. For Trevor the Zygomite, now this requires a magical Zygomite and it must be male only. You want to use a name reroll until you get Trevor. After that, you'll be using trait reroll until you get loyal trait. You can actually buy it from other players. So you want to hand this in to Granny, the Lizard Chicken. This requires the Chaotic trait. You want to name reroll until you get Malcolm. This time, it will also work with the female Lizard Chickens. So breeding evil chickens. Well, of course, you'll just breed a chicken with an evil trait on it. Exploding a Chinchampa. This only triggers when you're gathering produce. You must have unstable, or better yet, a nuclear trait on the Chinchampa. Finally, we have the Ravensworn trait. You want to breed all night animals with the Ravensworn trait on it. Now this requires the Ravensworn title unlocked first. So this wraps up my complete guide to player owned farms. Yeah, I know it's a really long guide, and in fact, this is probably the longest guide I've made on YouTube. Either way, I wish you all the best for player owned farms. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, because I will definitely be doing more guides in the future. Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today,